Hello, everyone. Uh, so I'm Dan Abrams. Uh, probably my biggest claim to fame in the Elm community is that I produced the live stream for Elm Europe last year, and I believe I'll be doing that again this year. Uh, and I produce things like that for big companies back in the US. Um, and my like long-term Elm goal is to write a open source video player that everybody can use that's um, best in class, that's as good as JW Player or VideoJS or any Flow Player, any of those players that you've worked with. So we can have one in Elm that's native to Elm. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about what I've learned along the way in this process, because it's been about two years so far. Um, so this is a big topic. So who here has either worked with basic audio video playback or wants to in the future, if you wanna write a podcast app or a video app? Anyone here? Yeah, yeah, it's pretty substantial. Uh, who here wants to work with web audio, which is for manipulating audio, playing sound effects for games, doing spatial sound effects, creating music synthesizers? Anybody want to work with web audio? Yeah, this is a very requested feature for, for Elm. Who wants to capture from webcams and microphones, or from desktop web capture, screen sharing, uh, capturing gameplay of your actual game that you've written in WebGL and Elm? Who wants to do that? Yeah, it's pretty cool, right? Um, and who wants to build the next uh, Netflix or Facebook Live or YouTube? Yeah, that's my goal. <laughs> uh, so this is very important to me. Um, before we get into the how, I want to talk about uh, why this is so important, which is that these are the um, top 12 visited sites in the US as of January 2019. I tried to do the world, but all the rest of the sites were Chinese, and I didn't know what all of them did. Um, and as you can see on this list, uh, of this list of the top 12, three of them are primarily video sites, including Pornhub. Um, another six aren't primarily video sites, but have a really important video product. So Amazon has a TV service and a music service. Um, Instagram serves videos. Reddit serves up a lot of multimedia content. Obviously, Facebook, Yahoo, and, and Twitter do. And of the remaining three, two of them serve up a lot of audio and video. So all of these, except Windows Live, are using the Media API in a pretty substantial way. And what I'm trying to get at is that on the web, this is a really important API. Um, and how is it to do it in Elm right now? And the answer is it's a little disappointing. Um, so right now in Elm HTML, you have the basic tags for uh, creating a DOM node that holds a video or an audio. This is equivalent of just writing it in your HTML body. Um, you, in HTML attributes, we have most of, but not all of the attributes that go on this. And, and most of the rest you can write your own for. Uh, so this is the simplest video player that you can write in Elm. You give it a source, and you tell it to see the controls. And this is what it looks like in Chrome. I made the stinger in the Netflix style, because I needed some. Uh, and this is what it looks like in Firefox. And if I get Safari up, give me one moment. Let me open that again in Safari. This is what it looks like in Safari. And this is my favorite visually of the three. Apple does a really great job with design. And I don't know if you've noticed the problem, but the problem is that they all have different looks to them, right? And one of the things we're not supposed to do on the web is have different looks for different browsers. They also operate differently. So in Chrome, we've made this video. We don't want anyone stealing this content. It, it was really hard. Um, and if I just click down here, I can now download the video, which, like, Netflix can't have that. <laughs> um, so, the first thing I want you to do when you're writing a player is to get rid of the controls attribute and start building your own. It's just buttons, it's HTML, they create messages, and that controls the playback. So, here I'm creating a button, on click it plays, it says play on it. Um, and the way you wire that up right now is through ports. So you have a port for play. It takes a string. That's the ID that you put on the DOM node on the video element. And it sends it out as a command. And then on the JavaScript side of the port, you query the element by ID and hit play. And this is hacky. This is not how Elm is really supposed to work. Because that DOM node was created by Virtual DOM. And Virtual DOM manages it. And now we're sort of reaching into Virtual DOM's world and grabbing the element. And that's really problematic. What if we don't have the ID right? What if, we, what if it doesn't exist anymore? Um, in JavaScript and in the HTML5 API, 
we have an object, an audio or a video object, and it has state, and it controls side effects, play, pause, seek, change the volume. And we don't have objects in Elm, so how do we deal with this? So the first thing is obvious, we can move our state into the model, right? Like that's, that, that should be obvious, I think. But we still have these side effects to deal with. How do we deal with playing and pausing and the fact that, that this changes? So updating the state should be pretty obvious to everyone too. We have a subscription, it updates our state. So we can have a subscription, a port that looks like this. This is just a wrapper around something that's sending um, some JSON through. Gives us, we take a state message and we, we create a subscription to it. Cool, so now we have this state update function, the state update subscription, and it updates our state. And I'm sorry, I went one too far. So here's where I'm gonna get really radical. And here's, here's where I'm gonna get uh, controversial in some ways, which is that I want you to take this media object and I want you to put it, sorry, in your model. I want you to have at least a reference to it in the model so that when you're reaching out through ports to, when you're reaching out through ports in order to control side effects, to control playback, to control pausing, you never get it wrong. So what I've been doing is sending out a port to create an actual DOM node that is invisible using create media. You give it a source, you give it some configuration. Does it loop? Is it muted? What's the volume? And you send it out through the port. And of course, once we've sent it out through the port, we can receive it back as some, uh, this is okay. In this case, media is an opaque type that has uh, an actual decode dot value. Uh, I'm just sending the object right back through and it's being managed in your model. You can also send a reference if you have tricky things going on with your model, but th this has been working really well for me. Um, so what we have now is a command to create media. That command then sends the media through a subscription into our model. And now we have a reference to the actual media object itself in our model. Now, we're not gonna call it an object, it's Elm, but we have a direct reference that we can send through a port and we can play, we can pause, we can see current time. And now that we do that, we can play, we just give it that, that opaque type and it plays. We can pause, we can seek, we can do anything else we need to do. This is so much easier than querying the DOM, I promise you. And this is what it looks like. And I'm gonna have audio here now, so. And I can pause it. And uh, some people I was showing this to thought that was very funny, that it says pause when I pause. Um, now, I had regular plain buttons there, big red buttons that were easy to see. I don't want you to just make that. This is the first player I ever made in Elm. Uh, you can have much more fun with the design. Uh, it's hard to see on this projector, but when I hit, Oh, it's not connecting to the server. This is hooked up to a Raspberry Pi that's hooked up to an actual record player. And when you play a record, uh, it streams a buffer to it, and you can, you can change the, the playback time by moving the needle. <laughs> this turns it on and off. It's not connecting right now. I think I, I just tested it a little bit, and it's a little Raspberry Pi Zero, and I'm pretty sure I've just overloaded it. Oh. So have fun with your design is the best principle, by the way, the best practice. OK. So, I think this is like a real benefit of the Elm architecture. I think this is better than the basic HTML5 media API. I wish we could do this more easily in JavaScript. Um, because I think this is a better metaphor for how media works. Probably the most common playback scenario for media is one player, one screen. Maybe on the plane ride over here on the train ride, you watched a movie on your laptop. And you hit play on your laptop and it plays on your screen, right? That's simple. Maybe you have a DVD player hooked up to a TV. You hit play on the DVD player, it shows up on the screen. One set of controls, one output. But that's not really how media works most of the time in real life. Like in this situation right now, I have some media, some slides that are playing off of here, and they are, they're on my laptop, but they're also on this big screen, right? And so if the screen and the laptop were each DOM nodes that were managing their own state, I would have to control the laptop and hit play. And it would have to send a message of some sort to the TV and then it would have to play. And you could manage that, that that's perfectly fine. That, that's not too complicated. But now you're worrying about synchronization and immediate synchronization is one of the hardest things you have to do. 
And this actual scenario that we're using in this room right now, which is pretty simple, is actually more complicated than that, because this, this is also being recorded. So now when I hit play, if, if everything is managing its own state, I have to send a message from my laptop to the TV and to the recorder to change the slide. Um, they might not get in sync. Those are out of sync. OK, so it's a little bit more complicated, but maybe you can manage it. OK, but how about a sports arena where there might be dozens, dozens of screens that have to remain in sync? Or a TV studio where not only are there dozens of screens, but there are dozens of sources, cameras, video playback. It's really, really hard. And in media, we don't have different, we don't have each station, each camera controlling its own state fully. We have a single source of truth, just like in Elm. And in the TV business, we call that a control room. And when you're doing professional TV, you actually are controlling the camera's settings from the control room. Um, if you've never been in a TV control room, it's really, it's really something. Um, you can have dozens of sources going out to dozens of different places, all controlled from one place, usually at the direction of a single person. So if there's one thing I could have you take away from this talk, it's that you should be thinking of your update function like a control room. It's a single source of truth, a single source of control. Um, but I want to talk about why this has such benefits over the old way of doing it. So a couple of months ago, I had a colleague who I sent something like this to with a, with a JavaScript player and some HTML. And he wanted to test something. Uh, he wanted to test it by having two, the same video on the same page. So he copied and pasted, and he put a second one on. And he called me in a panic. Does anyone know why? Identical IDs. And so every time he hit play, it didn't matter which player he hit play on, the first one started playing. It didn't matter. And with what I've just shown you, we can just eliminate that. We can just make that impossible state impossible. So just to recap what I've, what I've asked you to do, um, we've put our side effects into some commands. We are subscribing to some, some side effects, mostly state update, but also the creation of media itself. Um, and we've put our state and a reference to our media, our media object into our model. And for many things, like an audio player, this is a video game example, uh, that's all you need, right? Because there's no controls here. You just play, and it has music and sound effects. If you, are doing a, if you are doing an audio player, all you do is add some controls, and it plays. But we have a bit of a problem when it comes to video. Does anyone know what it is? So. Audio exists globally, right? If you hit play on audio, it's not anywhere in your DOM. It's just like a thing that plays through your speakers. The DOM doesn't really control your speakers. But video requires you to actually put an image in the DOM. So if you've now got your media in your model, how do you put, how do you put it into the DOM? And the answer is with a pretty simple function that takes your media and puts it in the DOM, creates an HTML message from it, um, because it's just because it's just a DOM node, we can style it however we want. We can give it a border. We can animate it. We can put it all over the screen. We don't have to worry about keeping it in sync because it's, it's controlled centrally from your control room and your update function. Um, this is briefly what it looks like. I'm using a web component to do this with ports here. Um, same thing I showed earlier, but now we're controlling it. Basic example, but. It's really a long way, I got to tell you. OK, so here's where it gets really cool. I know, I know I've added a lot of complication to do basic stuff like video playback. But here's where it gets really cool. I told you that you could create media with a source and some configuration. And you probably assumed that I meant you could give a URL for a video, and you can. But you can give it other sources as well. So you can give it some fallback sources, which is a list of different audio or video files that might work better or worse on different browsers. But what if we gave it a webcam capture? What if our source was just a webcam? And we can do that, and it's not very hard. So here we go. That's me. Hello, everyone. Thank you. And it really was simple. This is how I created the webcam. It was basically what I just showed you. I've got a little bit of extra configuration. I'm, I'm saying how much, uh, how big I want the video to be. I'm saying there should be no audio. But I mean, this is pretty understandable to everybody, right? It's just options for your webcam. Th th this, is really hard. this is pretty hard to do in JavaScript. And we can handle the errors automatically. 
it's better. But we're not limited to that. We can take, you can actually capture any element on your page with an ID. So you can do, this is only in Chrome and Firefox, by the way, this part. You can make a game, or you can have an app, and you can capture a div, and you can record it to file. You can stream it over WebRTC. You, you can do screen capture of your game. And you can add streaming sources, like HLS and Dash, which is how YouTube and Netflix works. They do not work with regular MP4s. They work with streaming formats. And streaming formats are really hard to do in Elm right now, because they require a lot of going back and forth to the DOM. And I've been working with them. I've been using hacks via custom elements. It's not great. It doesn't work great. This is pretty trivial to do this way, though. One extra benefit, though, is web audio, which is so widely requested. We can actually just create one of these media sources that's a piece of audio or a video, and we can create an audio note out of it. And this is a demo. I'm sorry. This is a demo that does just that, so this is some audio. Hello, this is Dan Abrams at Oslo Elm Day 2019. And here's a complex this is web Dan audio Abrams filter put on it that makes Oslo it sound like Elm a long talkie. Hello, this is Dan Abrams at Oslo Elm Day 2019. Okay, well, Hello, this is Dan Abrams at Oslo Elm Day 2019. Hello. Okay, I won't make you listen to me say that over and over again anymore. I promise you, I've heard it thousands of times. Um, so I've been really annoying both Richard and Evan, and I, I do mean annoying, um, about making this an Elm Exploration. I think we're on that path. Um, but until, until we do, I've made a ports version of this that you should be able to use very soon. I wanted it to be ready for today. We discovered one new error that has to be handled. There's some documentation studies we've written, but hopefully by the end of the month, you should be able to do most of what you've just seen except for web audio. Um, and hopefully pretty soon after that web audio. Um, I, know I, went, I know I covered a lot. I put, I'm putting my slides into a GitHub page, as well as all of these examples, as well as eventually there'll be a link to the package that will let you do this. Also, when I originally wrote this talk, I had like 15 more best practices, and they were mostly short, and I had to cut them because they were 40 minutes long. Um, they're not necessarily Elm specific. They're just like how to work with media on the web. I put them into a Git book. Uh, you know, it's best practices, what you should be doing. Um, if you want to reach, reach out to me, I'm very friendly. This is my email. Uh, come up to me here at, at the conference or email me or get me in touch with me on Slack. Show up at my door and knock in the middle of the night, whatever you want to do. Um, one more thing, uh, I just finished four months at Recurse Center, which used to be called Hacker School, if you know what that is. If you don't, um, it's, like a, it's like a sabbatical for programmers. And so uh, that finished Thursday, and so literally as of yesterday, I'm on the job market. So if you are looking to do media and element production, you know, get in touch with me, it's kind of my thing. Uh, and I have like a minute, so if anyone has a question very quickly, I'll take it very quickly. Otherwise, thank you.